Great. So uh, we are almost at the end of our program, uh, but we have a nice little treat coming up. Uh, we're going to hear from Lenore, who has hung out here for the whole two days and has been taking profuse notes. We charged him with uh, wrapping up these two days. So I don't think he needs any introduction, but for those of you perhaps new to the energy uh, conferences that we do, Lynn is... Um, well, it's really his fault that we're all here today. Uh, he's the founding director of the Global Climate and Energy Project, which started here about 20 years ago. And then he was the founding director of the Precourt Institute for Energy, which is present now. And he's also uh, was the undersecretary for energy. So he's spent some time, has a great depth of knowledge in the energy area and also in policy and a number of other things. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Lynn up. He's also a, a, a guitarist, a singer, and a pilot. So with that, I'm going to run. Uh, thanks, Jenny. It's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's a, there's a risk in asking an old guy to reflect on anything, you know, because I could wander off into some who knows what. So, but I realize that I'm standing between you and the bar. So I will take that as a, as a danger point. So, so think about where we've been for the last uh, uh, couple of days. We, Arun started us off reminding us that the, the challenge of scale is one that we really all have to wrestle with. And it's pretty clear that we're going to need a broadly diversified portfolio of ways that we convert primary energy resources into all the energy systems we uh, uh, we count on and take for granted, and we need to do that with much, much lower uh, greenhouse gas emissions and other impacts that, uh, that often go with them. Um, and so that means that an, an institution like this one should, should have to should try to work on uh, an equally diversified portfolio. Um, and that's, that is exactly what we've been trying to do over the last 20 years in this area. Um, but um, now, of course, we have enough going on that it's a bit of a challenge to, to uh, try to give you a, a, the flavor of that without overwhelming you uh, at all. Um, and there is a lot going on here. Um, and much of what you heard about involved some combinations of, of expertise that are spread across the campus in different departments and different people. Uh, and so part of our job at the Precourt Institute is to try to find ways to, to bring people together. And so uh, you saw some examples of what can happen when you get a bunch of smart people thinking together about uh, uh, ways to do things better. So specifically, we started out with a, a, a couple of novel techniques for energy conversions. The whole idea of um, using the cold of the universe to uh, to go from uh, uh, to cool our buildings uh, and ourselves and uh, to go from light to darkness. Uh, and uh, uh, then we looked at polymers and their side chains to turn photons into electrons, chemistry to electrons, and then electrons to chemistry uh, with some new options to do that as well. Uh, so that was, I thought, pretty interesting. Um, then we went, moved on to electric energy storage. This is an area where you saw uh, a group of people trying to figure out the absolute fundamentals of how the electrochemistry work, how ions move, how uh, the, 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 the specific physical functions that make the battery work, but also lead to the ways they might fail. Um, and then to put those together into models that then can be used to represent what happened and then, of course, to design better batteries going forward. Uh, so this, this idea of weaving fundamental understanding into something that goes to better designs was uh, much in evidence. It was a group that talked about new fuels. Um, you know, there, Jenny mentioned that I'm a pilot, and by golly, uh, you know, the energy density of a long chain fuel of some kind uh, is really does uh, work for, uh, for an aircraft and uh, is likely to continue to work. So we need to think about all the ways that we can uh, do better there. Um, algae, green hydrogen and catalysis, lots of catalysis in, uh, in what we saw, using x-rays to figure out how the catalysts work um, and then contemplating all the barriers to scale. Uh, the good news is that there are lots of options and the challenge is that there are lots of options. Um, we finished the day with a look at carbon management 
Uh, and the options uh, talked about range from geologic storage with lots of attention to risks and careful site selection and monitoring uh, to nature-based uh, carbon renewal, removal, which, uh, uh, you know, by golly, if you're going to start with low concentrations of CO2 in the air, uh, right now at least, uh, nature has figured out a way to do that that we can afford, and uh, those of us who work on um, uh, engineered methods haven't yet managed to do that. So, uh, so lots of interesting things there. Um, uh, posters and a glass of something in conversation finished that day. Thank goodness we, it was a full day for sure. So we started day two with um, the scintillating topic of carbon accounting. Um, now, you know, you were supposed to laugh at that. Um, <laughs> you, you have to admit that the discussion of uh, the challenges of dealing with scopes one, two, and three emissions and voluntary markets and carbon prices and the approaches being used by some of the companies actually was pretty darn interesting um, and a lot to think about in the, in the challenges that, uh, that, that we have to face, and we'll come back to that when we talk about Stanford's effort in that area in, in a minute. Um, the next topic was, was thinking about clean energy um, in the context of, um, the, of equity uh, at the same time. And, the thread that bound a lot of that together was using uh, a bunch of uh, models of complex systems, um, the uh, electricity, uh, there was a conversation about decarbonizing California, and, and trying to use those to, to understand what's going to happen uh, as we electrify energy services and how can we use that to, to improve air quality uh, and other environmental impacts along the way. There, there really is a lot to be done here in, um, in learning to model complex systems of complex systems. Um, they have widely varying spatial scales of time and space, or, uh, hugely varying response latencies, um, and then there's the human behavior part of all of this that's pretty important and pretty hard to model. So daunted by some of those challenges, we move closer to home. Um, and we looked at Stanford's uh, uh, relatively new energy system um, and, uh, uh, and uh, used it as a vehicle to think about these uh, scope one, two, and three emissions for the campus um, and, um, and used the example of scheduling uh, our fleet of, uh, of electric buses to, to, uh, uh, to figure out how to decarbonize that part of it as well. Um, we have actually have made some progress at, uh, at Stanford, uh, certainly in the greenhouse gas emissions, in water consumption, uh, and costs. Um, the, that system saves many tens of millions of dollars over a 30-year period. Um, uh, it took a significant investment and a whole lot of effort to put it all in place. Uh, but nevertheless, it's paying big benefits for us going forward. We're not done, so we still have 18% to go. Then on to transportation. It's a critical element of the clean energy systems and, uh, uh, and we need to, to uh, understand how, how those complex systems fit with all the others. Um, fleets turned out to provide some useful um, lessons uh, as well as the uh, thinking about the various options of hydrogen, electric, battery vehicles, and so on. Combinations of, of uh, constraints on power, uh, local grids and distribution, for example, of hydrogen add some complexity to all this, but also opportunities to understand how we might be able to do it. And some more pesky humans and their behavior here as well. The last bit this afternoon really focused on industry emissions. It's about a third of the emissions, so it's important. Um, there was uh, sort of nanoparticle groundwork for, uh, for decarbonizing steel using uh, hydrogen, alkali activated cement with entangled fibers to make decarbonized concrete, uh, combined electromagnetics, additive manufacturing, computing, porous and um, power electronics with reaction engineering to think about how to do chemical synthesis in a much more efficient way. Um, and then looked at, at uh, better methane sensors and testing them to reduce fugitive methane emissions. Lots of opportunities there. And then finally, this last session, uh, uh, we used uh, efficient additive manufacturing and photon up conversion of blue to UV light to 
make unmoldable complex structures with much less material, uh, and then to undo the 3D printing to recycle the resins. Uh, the objective here seems to be to revolutionize the, uh, the entire plastics industry, and by golly, they might actually pull it off. So it was actually a lot for two days. Um, and, and so how do we put all this together? Um, so it, it certainly was a wide-ranging portfolio, no, no question about that. We, uh, uh, we have a lot of talented people uh, working on a lot of parts of this clean energy transition. Um, and there are a lot of people doing that that uh, you didn't hear from in this time around, uh, but they're there and working hard. For me, a, an important element of all this um, is the evidence that bringing together a bunch of smart and really creative people together um, to do something that's hard, uh, but where uh, the combinations of ideas and talents and people can really make uh, progress on, uh, on hard stuff. Um, you heard a, a, a lot of that, I think, in what was presented. Um, and as I said at the outset here, there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, we very much appreciate the, the company support that made a lot of this uh, possible. Uh, and we appreciate your being here, the, your interest, your questions, your suggestions of questions that we might investigate, um, and, uh, and all, and all of uh, how, the way that goes together with your attendance. So thanks for that. I am now done, and I turn it over to Yi Chui, the director of the Precourt Institute, uh, to close us out.